Nuclear fusion is the process that powers the sun and the stars. It is the process that made the atoms in your body. The power generated by this process is immense and could replace all of our current power generation methods. But it's just around the corner, right? Right? Well, that's what we thought in the 1950s, and it never came. Recently, however, real progress has been made and major milestones have been accomplished. So how far away is nuclear fusion power? Let's discuss it. So what is nuclear fusion? Nuclear fusion works by combining lower mass atoms, which when combined, release energy. This is the opposite of nuclear fission, which generates energy through decaying large mass atoms, like uranium, which leaves radioactive byproducts. Basically, atoms that are lighter than iron generate energy when combined, while atoms that are heavier than iron do the opposite. But there is a problem. While nuclear fusion offers a lot of potential energy, after all, it is what powers stars, it also requires conditions that are difficult to produce. The atoms naturally repel each other, stopping them from fusing. To overcome this, the atoms need to be densely packed and extremely hot. As we can't really produce the pressures inside stars, we need to increase the temperature to compensate. This ends up requiring temperatures above 100 million degrees. Not the easiest thing to produce and maintain. At these temperatures, the atoms become a plasma, and this plasma is very reactive. The challenge is not just to make this extremely hot plasma, but to contain it so that it doesn't touch anything, which requires large and expensive magnets. Yet, despite all these difficulties, there has been historically a lot of optimism about how soon we will have nuclear fusion power. So what do we need for a nuclear fusion power reactor? First, we need to be able to generate enough heat and pressure to start the nuclear fusion reaction to begin with. Second, we need to be able to confine the plasma so that it is able to react stably. Third, we need to find a good way to inject new fusion material so that the reaction can be self-sufficient. And fourth, we need a way to extract the heat from the reaction and to convert it into electrical energy. And we have spent a long time on these goals. Every couple of years, we hear about new breakthroughs in nuclear fusion power. This usually gives us some hope that nuclear fusion power is only just around the corner, but it's not. The history of nuclear fusion breakthroughs is extensive, but has occurred over a very long period of time. It was all the way back in 1932, when the first direct demonstration of fusion in the lab was performed. But after this, little progress was made. While we knew how to make rudimentary fusion reactions, we didn't really understand how to confine the plasma, and as such, work really stalled for almost two decades. It wouldn't be until the 1950s that we would see some big breakthroughs. In 1950, the Tomac, a type of magnetic confinement fusion device, was proposed by Soviet scientists, which is still the main type of reactor used today. This device uses powerful magnetic fields to confine the plasma into a torus shape. It consists of a vacuum chamber for the plasma to be held in, a series of toroidal and poloidal magnets, and a large solenoid at the center. Then in 1951, an Argentinian team claimed that they had produced a controlled nuclear fusion reaction. And one year later, in 1952, the first true thermonuclear warhead, which uses a fusion reactions, was detonated. All of this progress made in the 1950s resulted in predictions that nuclear fusion reactions would be commercial within the next two decades at the first Atoms for Peace meeting in 1955. But two decades later, little progress had been made. Then, in 1983, some additional hope could start to form. The Joint European Taurus, or JET, was constructed and demonstrated its first plasma. This reactor would be the leading nuclear fusion reactor for nearly four decades. In 1997, JET produced 16 megawatts of fusion power. While this was less than the power they put into the system, it would remain the world record 
until 2020. But JET was never intended to be a power plant. It was designed to test how viable nuclear fusion power is. And while it has taken a long time, the results are promising. Since JET started operating, many different nuclear fusion experiments have been performed around the globe. The most promising for demonstrating a break-even point where the energy output is larger than the energy put into the plasma is ITER in France. This massive reactor is 73 meters high and weighs more than three Eiffel Towers at 23,000 tons. This is a massive project and it is a collaboration for many countries around the world, but it has had many setbacks. The startup date of this proof of concept reactor has slipped from 2016 to 2025, which is partially due to a lack of funding to pay for the ever growing expense, which has grown by millions of euros. With all of these delays and many more that I haven't mentioned, we are now expecting a full operation of ITER to commence in 2035. Unfortunately, this doesn't mean that we will have nuclear fusion power generation by 2035. It is one thing to produce more energy that is put into the plasma. It is another to actually generate a net positive in power when the operation of the rest of the facility is included. While ITER may produce a net positive in power, it won't be significant enough to be a power station. ITER is a proof of concept reactor. Only the next generation of reactors after ITER can be used for power generation. But more on these reactors soon. There is another reactor in China that is also producing some very interesting results, but similar to ITER, it is a proof of principle device. It is predicted to be capable of producing power sometime in the 2030s, similar to ITER. And with upgrades, it is planned to convert into a potentially viable power station in the future. But this being said, this reactor is planned to be an intermediate step between the results of ITER and the fully fledged nuclear fusion power station. So when can we expect some of these actual nuclear fusion power stations, which are referred to as demo reactors? In Europe, the successor to ITER, DEMO, is predicted for 2050. In China, a demo reactor is also planned to come online in the 2050s. South Korea plans to construct a reactor by 2037 with the potential for electricity generation starting in 2050. Russia also plans to have a fusion power plant by 2050. There's a common number in all of these countries. We could expect a real break-even reaction sometime in the 2030s and then see a nuclear fusion power station generation sometime in the 2050s. This is important. With global warming, we can't afford to wait for nuclear fusion power. It's not around the corner. It's still decades from being realized. Maybe with some breakthroughs, it will speed up this timeline. Or maybe we will see even more delays. Only time will tell. Nuclear fission is also an important but delicate power generation method. With nuclear power stations now in war zones in Europe, it begs the question of how safe they are in these conditions. Check out this video if you want to know more. Thanks for watching, have fun, and see you next time.